Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Yarnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. And as promised, we're going to start a brand new painting. And I'll tell you what, I know you're going to love this one. I say that every time I know. So you, I think, you say that every time, Jerry. Well, listen, every new painting is fun to do, and I love doing everything I do. And I don't always like everything I do. That's a typical artist deal. In fact, let me give you that average uh, that I spoke about before. Some of you are kind of new to the program. The national average for a professional artist to get a really good painting that they're happy with for the opaque mediums like oil and acrylic and some of the others is about one out of every seven or so you do. For the uh, transparent mediums like watercolor, it's about one out of every 10. Now those of you that have painted for a long time, I think you will agree with me on that because most of us don't like usually what we paint. We might like parts and things, but most of us as we progress as artists and we want to grow and get better, we just don't like what we paint. We can't wait to get to the next one. So it's fun for me to try new things, to share new things with you all, to learn new things myself, be new places, try new subjects, and that's what we're gonna to do today. Now, as, as we are, we're traveling around the country still, trying to get some paintings done in almost, well, in all 50 states eventually, and now we're gonna to move to California. Uh, this is the painting that I, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about. It has a little history. We're going to be at the Joshua Tree National Park, which is in Southern California, just a little bit uh, east of Palm Springs. And it's a beautiful, wild wilderness of the most incredible uh, land formations, rock. It looks like you're on another planet. Uh, beautiful rocks that the wind and the weather has put it and kind of created these little sculptures. Uh, there's these the white sands. But the thing we're going to paint today, which is unique, are the verbena. Verbena, of course, you know, are a flower. They grow wild out there, and they grow in huge masses on the hillsides. Then there's the white sand drifts. And then you look at the rugged, arid mountains in the distance, and it's just an amazing thing. Well, here's the deal. Uh, a few years ago, I decided to enter the National Art in the Park competition, and one of the parks I chose was Joshua Tree National Park. So I went out there to do my research, and I got out there and I just fell in love with the place. So I took about two or 300 photographs and I came back to do my study painting to prepare for the main painting. Well, as most artists do that are a professional artist, I got a little behind schedule and I didn't have time to finish the original. So I sent my study in. Lo and behold, it got accepted in the top 100, which is to me an honor because they only pick 100 out of like 3,000 that go on tour around the country. Plus they've chose some for their, for their national uh, card. Uh, the uh, note card for the Park Service. Well, here's, here it is. Here's the original painting I did right here, if you'll close in. So this is uh, Joshua Tree National Park. This was my study painting. And this is done on a uh, 20 by 24 canvas. If you could see it real close, you would notice there's a lot of texture under it. I put modeling paste on it to give it a lot of rugged texture. And then I, I did this to go home and then, you know, enlarge it and make it a better painting. Well, actually it turned out good enough to do all the things that it's done. So this is one of the cards that was made right there. Now here's some of the reference material. I'm going to show you the photos. This uh, one below it, see the beautiful purple verbena? So we're going to use this. We had a, see here's some more down here. And then here's some here. This is kind of how I got some of the ideas. You see the white sands coming through and the, all the brush, the vegetation. All the things going on, there's all kind of, there's some of the golden uh, stuff in there, this, I don't know, just dried brush. And then there's the rugged mountains in the background. I'll show you some more over here. There's some that are a little more close up. See, they're just a little seed, they're kind of a funny little looking thing, almost a thorny looking bush, but when they're in groups, they're beautiful. Almost like, now here's, see, I like the sandy washes here. And then you can see the golden colors. Uh, let's see here's some of the mountains back here and then the, the bushes so I want to combine these together I'm going to kind of use the same one I've done there and I've worked out a little bit of a sketch here it's not a major sketch and I'll probably adjust it some because I'm not real happy with some of it but you know how we do this we kind of play it by ear so the first step is to put a simple sky in we don't want the sky to compete uh, with the painting so it's going to be a simple light blue sky that's all it is maybe a little soft color in it and then we'll have our distant hills so we'll start first of all with our hake brush which by the way this is a stretched canvas an 18 by 24 this is a dark charcoal warm charcoal medium dark color burn umber ultramarine blue and white uh, probably about a fourth as much 
Let's say burn number with about a fourth as much blue. Keep it on the warm side. Now we're going to start up here with your paintbrush. We're going to lightly wet the area. So it's kind of fun. You know, in my world, I get to travel all over the country, and I never fly anywhere. I don't, number one, I don't like to fly, but I don't like to miss things. I love to drive. I'm a driver. I could have been a truck driver and perfectly happy. And uh, I love to see the country. So I get to see all these places, and I always have these things I want to paint. And I've always wanted to get back to this place and back to this painting and do another version of it. So now we're going to just go ahead and do it on TV. I know it's not my studio version, uh, my professional piece that I would put in a museum, but I could. I want to show you guys some tricks and some fun, cool things. So I'm going to use it for that purpose this time. We'll have a lot of fun. So I'm just taking gesso as we normally do, and we're going to just put a nice coat of gesso on using the big X strokes. We're using our hake brush, the two inch hake brush. Remember a hake brush is made out of goat hair. Um, well, I guess you can make them out of other things, but goat hair is the most common hair used. It's one of the finest hairs known to man that you can make a paintbrush with because it's so fine and that's why they shed a little bit. We get complaints all the time when people call and say, well this sh hake brush sheds. Well they just do because they're so fine. They break off. They uh, you know, they just come out of the metal ferrule, or if it's a sewn one, some of the ones that are in the bamboo handles are sewn in. Some are glued, crimped and glued. This one has to be crimped and glued. All right, get a nice distribution. Now, I'll show you another little trick real quick. You can take your mister bottle, put it on fine mist, and you can lightly mist this to buy yourself a little time, and that will give you, and then blend it, because you want this to stay creamy work the mist in. Now, let's go down here. I'm going to take my ultramarine blue just a little bit. I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to work across. Touch of water. Still not quite as wet as I want it, but we'll just add a little touch of water down here out of my water can there. Put the blue at the top and just work it across. But notice, folks, how I'm using these nice, big, wide, broad brush strokes. That's really important for this particular painting. Now, I want to add some turquoise deep. So if you take a little touch of turquoise and put in with this, this will give us that nice, soft color that you see a lot out there. Just kind of work it in. And then you work this down towards the horizon. just don't need a lot of color. We just mostly just need a softness and just a coolness to it. Now we may come back and add some color, I mean some soft wispy clouds if we want to. But I'm putting this turquoise more towards the horizon area. Now see that's a nice, that's a really pretty color. Nice and soft, clean, peaceful, and it won't compete with your, what we're getting ready to do here a little bit. All right, and while that's still wet, we're going to come in here, and now let's go over here and you can see, here's the mountain in the background. We're going to see the gray tints underneath it. That'll be your first value against the sky. So that'll be about one or two values. Keep your hake brush in your hand. Go down here. Now, I've got a, a purple tint here that we've been using in previous paintings, but this is a common color I use. That's ultramarine blue with a little bit of uh, purple and a little burnt sienna and white to create sort of a warm middle tone gray on the mauvish side. Let's see if this is going to work up here. Now, you put that on there. See, when you put that on, because this is still wet, you can see how it kind of blends in. Well, that makes it soft and lightens it. And it may be a little dark still, so all I'm going to do is add just a smidge of white. I've got some white there on my palette. Blend it up here on your canvas. And see, by turning your brush on the edges, you can get these little ridges. And then, just kind of feather it. I'm kind of boring the edge over here, because it's kind of out there in this desert. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not a, I don't think I could live in the desert, frankly. You know, but I, I just love to go out there and visit. I just, 
Every time I go out there, I'm just amazed. You know, you think of the desert. If you're, if you've never been